So if you've taken a break between the last version and this version, you should have created your resume and then added fonts and colors to it. And I have these in my O2 lab folder and I've named them Resume, Resume 2, and I did a save as and named it as Resume 3, which is a copy of Resume 2 where we left off. And that's where I'm going to pick up. Now, we're going to need to do that each time that we make a major change to it. We're going to save each revision going forward so that we don't copy over our last one, and you'll hand in each one. So I obviously did not finish completely formatting every part of this. I'm not really worried about it. What I really want to get into in this video is doing page layout and we've done lay formatting basically for fonts and colors already which helps already to make it look more attractive now I want to go into really how to set it up to control the flow of the page and there's a lot involved with that the first step is we need to add what's a, called a div and I'm doing this in the older style we're going to do three steps before we're done. I'm going to break things into divs so that we have some sort of structure to them. And I'm going to put some um, lines around them so that you can see where the divs are. In the next video, we're going to make the divs float and change the way that they align. And in the final one, we're going to make them semantic. We're going to change them from divs to the current HTML5 structure so that you will have gone through basically 15 years worth of evolution as far as doing page layout very quickly. Though really it's about 10 years because table layout was strongly in play through the early 2000s which I've explained but I haven't made you do. So if you can remember this is what it looked like and also remember it doesn't look true in here even if we go to live view which should show you what it's going to look like in a browser it may not be completely true to what we see um, opening it in an actual browser. The reason for this is that I'm using CS6, which is a couple years old. If I was in Creative Cloud, it would be continuously updating. So there are things that the browsers support now that they didn't two years ago that don't necessarily may not reflect on the screen here inside of Dreamweaver. So just be aware of that. If you try something that you think should work, that doesn't open it up in an actual browser, see if it works in the browser. So I'm going to take this in here and I'm going to just make it show up real quick. I'm going to add a, I'm going to redefine what's called a div, a division. And a div is how um, we have traditionally broken the page into segments. And so if I put in a div and we make them all have a border and um, we're going to do border and I want to make the border style solid and let's see what that gives me once I put a div in so we're going to put a div around the whole thing and typically when I'm using divs I identify them using an ID tag even if I'm not going to necessarily program to that ID tag just because it helps me keep straight which div does what. So I'd start by putting a div and I put in an ID equals container. And I always do a container which will make the other pieces of my page hold together. And then when I'm done, I'm going to come to the bottom and close the div. And I just realized I didn't really complete this before because I have other things in here that should have been closed. And you'll notice that even though um, I didn't properly close them, it still worked. I haven't been checking this in Firefox the way I should. What I should be doing is doing a preview in Firefox and viewing my page source to see if I have any errors in here, which now I don't. That should have come up as an error if I was properly checking this. So I'm going to use some comments in here. I've got my div in here and I'm closing my div. And one of the ways that I like to use comments is to tell myself which div I'm closing because if you have a lot of them, it can get kind of ugly. So I'm going to put in a comment here that says closing container. I just use the ID. It's, this is for me. It's not for anything else. But you'll see here, especially if I go to live view, 
that I now have a border around my div tag. It's making me minorly crazy and I can't help it. It's just who I am. I'm going to have to put some padding in here. Now watch, what I don't like is right here with the education right next to um, the line. So I'm going to add padding and I'm going to add padding all the way around and I'm going to say three pixels and that looks better to me. I can't help it. Sometimes I just have to keep formatting. But that's one of the things that you can do because it really doesn't look good when it's too close to the edge. So I could do things that are going to be the same for every div, but we're going to keep adding divs. So I'm going to have a div for each area here. So when I get into objective, I'm going to add a div. Now, normally I would add it, and I'm going to go ahead and do it. So we have the div, div is the outside, and then we're going to do a div ID equals header, and I'm going to close it right after my horizontal rule because I consider that part of my header. And again, I like to make a note to myself where each one ends. It just helps me. And so you're going to see each one's going to line around it. You can do this if you want. I'm just trying to show you it as it appears. Adding the border is completely optional for the assignment. I just think it's really helpful to see where the divs start and stop. Okay, so my next section is the objective. And sometimes leaving a couple blank lines around each div helps you know where things are starting and stopping. So div ID equals objective. And an ID can be anything you want. You just can't reuse it on the same page. And so this is where that would end. And then I would have, and we'll show you where the line is. Oh, and see, now I want margins because I don't like them touching each other either. A little knowledge can be a dangerous thing. I'm not really a super strong design person. I'm truly a programmer at heart and by training, but I've been hanging out with and taking enough design classes that I don't like the way that looks. So I'd put in a margin of three pixels. And there, we've got a little bit more spacing between each thing because, well, <laughs> I can, so I'm going to. So then we've got the objective, and again, we're going to put in our comments. And I'm going to go ahead and do the next few parts without talking. And I'm just going to fast forward so you can see make, me make these changes really fast because it's going to be the same thing over and over again. Okay, so as you can see, I've broken my page into logical sections. That's really the first step of doing page formatting, is having logical nested sections that you can work with. And we're going to play with this a bit. Um, I actually want to take this one step further. I'm going to have the references actually come out off to the side here. So I need to move that because the order that these are stacked in is important. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this and we're going to do some formatting in the next version. And so I want this to actually come in where it starts not with the header but after the header. So I want it to end up over here on the right side of the objective. So I need to make sure that that appears where I want to in the code. That's going to be important when I float it. So I just rearranged the order so that I can do some other stuff with this. Okay, so that's where you need to get. You need to break your resume into logical sections with an appropriate ID. And once you've done that, 
Again, borders are optional, but not a bad idea if you want to try right now to show exactly where each thing is. I think it may help you follow what's happening, especially if you click over and check on what it does. Once you get that all set, save this, and then when you're done, you're going to save again, and then you're going to do a save as, and it's going to start with resume four, picking up where resume three left off. So I saved it, then I did a save as resume four, resume three, it's good, we're going to close it, you're going to pick up in the next video with resume four.